In this episode, let's have a look at the Aperture Lightstorm C300D. This is a big light. We've been waiting for this for a while. It is daylight balanced. What can you do with this that you can't do with smaller lights, say, for example, the COB120s from Aperture as well? Well, there are a few different things. First of all, you can use it as an outdoor fill. The other lights generally can do a tiny bit, but not as much as this. And especially here, for example, where we put the Fresnel lens on it and focused it on the face of our talent here to really kind of bring the exposure on their face up. You can also use it as a window light. You shoot through the window. And some people might ask, well, why would you want to do that if you shoot during the day? Can't you do the same thing? Well, you might be able to, you might get lucky, but the sun might change while you're shooting and it will not be consistent. So having a light that you can control makes it much more consistent. And again, because it has so much more power, you have more flexibility to get the exact look you want. It's also helpful if you need to bring up the ambiance in a room, and it's also helpful if you need to flood a larger set. And of course, you can always use it for interviews or talking heads or anything else of that nature, and it won't even break a sweat. Here, for example, I have it set to 30 out of 100 to light me. Let's run through what's included. First of all, you get the light head, of course, with the aluminum body, very nicely built, a reflector, an AC adapter with an all-metal build, a controller receiver with battery plates, and a strap to hang it from a stand, Again, this is all a metal and plastic build. All the cables you need to connect to the light head and to the AC adapter and to the power mains, a remote control, and of course this soft case, which makes it very nice for when you're transporting it around on set and back home. First of all, this is a daylight balanced light. It is generally the color of daylight. When I measured it in my studio here with a Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini Pro using the custom white balance function, it showed that it was 5250 Kelvin. And so, don't get confused. A lot of people say, okay, daylight is 5,500 or daylight is 5,600. Um, really, daylight kind of varies anywhere between five and 6,000, I would say. So this actually seems to mix quite nicely with most types of daylight. Overall, build quality-wise, it is pretty much what we've come to expect from Aperture. It is a high-quality, mostly aluminum head with a few rubber parts for the handle and plastic on some of the knobs. And then on the control box, it is mostly metal with plastic ends and the new AC adapter, which is unique to the 300D, has an all metal exterior build. So this will hold up pretty nicely over time. And in fact, I've been shooting with a COB120 set of them actually for well over a year and a half, and they are holding up very nicely. They're built pretty much exactly the same as this with the exception of the power adapter, but everything's held up very, very nicely. I expect the same out of the 300D. Because the 300D draws more power than its predecessors, it does need more cooling. There are two fans in the head on the 300D, which concerned me at first, but they've done something quite clever with them. Those two fans actually spin at different speeds, therefore the sound they make actually produces two different frequencies, so it doesn't become an additive sound, and they actually are very whisper quiet. I haven't found them to be an issue in terms of interfering with microphone pickup at all. The yoke is all metal, which allows you to point the light up or down, and it also has an umbrella receiver, which is really nice. A great and simple and inexpensive way to diffuse your light if you need to do that. Next up is the controller receiver. This thing is enormous <laughs> relative to the 120s, but it has to be pretty large because it has two plates for V-mount or Anton Bauer gold mount batteries on the back. Yes, you can battery power this. It does require 190 watt hour batteries according to Aperture. I don't actually have two of those, so I couldn't actually test it. We're going to come back and do that at a future time. But my guess is you could probably get somewhere around an hour at full power, and it probably extends significantly longer than that if you pull back the output a little bit. All the same controls that we've come to expect on the COBs. You have a switch here that allows you to control whether the fan is in automatic mode, so it will turn off if it's not needed, turn on if it is, or you can force it on. It has a dial here that allows you to change the dimming from 100% down to 10%. Of course, a power button, and then also buttons that allow you to change its group and channel assignments for use with the remote. Next, we have the AC adapter, and this thing is built quite literally like a tank. It is an all-metal build, very nicely done on that part. It also has some holes cut out for cooling. The only downside that I've found with this entire light kit so far is that the fan in the AC adapter is a little bit on the loud side. So it's not a total deal breaker. You just need to position it a little bit farther away from your talent. And in this case, you can see here, I actually set it on the floor with a sound blanket surrounding it. 
um, behind the light, and that made it so that none of the sound from the fan bleeds into the microphones. Again, this is also a larger light that you wouldn't typically put really close to the talent, so the risk of that sound getting into the microphones is not as high anyway. But if you are going to use it as a key light, and a, a soft key light in particular, and bring it in pretty close, you will want to be a little bit careful about where you put the power adapter. The C300D pulls about 320 watts when it settles in at 100% output, which is a, quite a bit of light. <laughs> and I think that's where it gets its name. I actually saw it spike up to about 330-some watts at some point, but it generally settles to about 320. And then when you lower the output to its lowest setting of 10, it draws a little over 30 watts. What this means in practical terms is that you can put a good number of these on a household circuit without a problem. Generally, you could easily get two. Depending on the household circuit, you could even get three or four. The C300D also comes with the same remote that comes with all of the other light storm lights and some of the Amran lights as well. So it's an integrated system. That means that if you already have other light storms or Amrans that use the same remote, which is almost all of them, then you'll be able to control all of them from a single remote, which is really, really nice. The only caveat is that you do have to manually turn the light on first and then the remote becomes active and can communicate with the light. Just as before, and I don't want to make a huge deal out of this because in retrospect, it hasn't been an issue for me, but I, the plastic knobs on the yoke and uh, the knob that allows you to tilt the light, it feels like a hollow plastic knob, but it's held up really well on all of my light storms. And I've actually been shooting with light storms for over two years now. None of them have broken. So maybe I'm being a little too nitpicky. Color quality is also excellent as we've come to expect from the aperture lights. We shot here with a color checker video from x color chart and brought that into DaVinci Resolve and it pretty much lays out on a vector scope in a picture perfect fashion. All of the colors are exactly where we would expect them pretty much. And my subjective assessment is the same. The skin tones come out great and all the other colors look accurate. In terms of light output with the reflector at 1 60th of a second ISO 200, we got F11 at one meter. With the Fresnel lens focused to 42 degrees, same settings, we got f16. And then if you drop the Fresnel lens down to 12 degrees, we were able to get f22. These are just sort of practical measurements to give you a sense for how much light output you're really going to get. That's a pretty strong light. One thing that can be an issue with LED lights is flicker, especially on the less expensive models. They'll sometimes use pulse width modulation, which is a kind of a technique that makes the lights flicker, at least at certain frequencies, so that if you are shooting at high speed, say for example, one two thousandth of a second, you might start to see some flicker. So we did various tests, and here we're shooting at a shutter angle of 11.2 degrees with a the frame rate set to 60 frames per second. So that's roughly the equivalent of one two thousandth of a second. We're not noticing any sort of flicker here. So whatever aperture is doing to allow you to dim, it's working quite nicely. Again, as I mentioned before, the soft case is really handy. It seems well constructed. I've had soft cases from Aperture with the other lights that I've used, both the Tri-8 and the 120s, and they've held up nicely over time, and I'd expect the same out of this one. Made of kind of a tough nylon material on the outside. Everything's well made, nicely padded, works great. Now, one thing that's unique about the Aperture line of COB lights, the single point lights, is that they have a Bowens mount on them, which means you can buy a lot of different accessories. Not only accessories that are put out by Aperture itself, but also others that are made for the Bowens mount. So for example, here I have the Aperture Light Dome, which is really a staple for me. I use it on almost all of my talking head and interview setups. It produces a beautiful soft light. Of course, there's also the Fresnel lens accessory that you can add, which allows you to focus the beam a lot tighter and get a stronger output per distance. And that works quite nicely in a lot of cases as well. I've also added these third-party barn doors, and I'll put a link for these down below. So if you want to cut the light, this is a nice feature as well. And then finally, the pricing on this light. Now, I need you to understand that this is a big light, and it's a really a lighting instrument. It's a pretty nicely made piece of gear. So it is priced at $1,099 US. Um, that's actually a lot less expensive than anything else in this category that I've ever used or heard about. So it's really quite a bargain for what it is, and it will start shipping at the end of November 2017. So overall, in summary, Aperture's really done it again here with the COB300D. I really love this light as well. It is a nice addition to my kit because it allows me to do some things creatively that I haven't been able to do before. Of course, all the standard features are there, great color quality, lots of light output, lots of flexibility because of the Bowens mount that you can add different accessories for shaping the light. And the price, I think, is fair at $1,099.
Now, one question is, is would this be the first light I would buy? Probably not. I'd actually probably buy the COB 120 first for key light and for talking heads and interviews and things of that nature. The COB 300D is a bigger light and it's really kind of a little bit more specialized. You can, of course, use it for all the same things that you'd use the 120 for, but you can also do more with it in terms of backing it off and lighting an entire set or shooting through a window or using it as a fill outdoors. So overall, the C300D is a fantastic light if you're in the market for a big LED light at a fair price. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, be sure to do that. And if you'd like to be notified when each new episode comes out, go ahead and click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. We'll talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.